So my name is Martin Johnson. I am from Sweden. Uh, but before, my history is actually in Denmark. I used to work for Faring Pharmaceuticals. I was with them for 18 years, primarily working internationally and launched what today is Faring's biggest product in the infertility area. But now I've moved on, so now I'm back in Sweden after many years in the US, and I'm the CEO of Alsecure Pharma. And uh, I'm going to present to you who we are, uh, what we are focusing on, our science, and our plans for the future. And if we look at uh, Alsecure, Alsecure is a company focusing on Alzheimer's disease and pain, and as you know, those are areas of huge unmet medical need. Uh, we were founded uh, as a company in 2016 uh, by sponsorship uh, from the Swedish Alzheimer's Fund, but actually you can see us as a spin-off from AstraZeneca, because AstraZeneca were active in Alzheimer's and pain until 2012. Then they left the area, and then uh, five leading uh, scientists from uh, uh, AstraZeneca founded Alsecure, first as a research foundation and then as a commercial company. And we are a very experienced team with the capabilities from early drug discovery, target uh, identification, molecule development, preclinical work development, and also commercialization. And we are based up in Stockholm at Karolinska Institute, and we work very much with uh, Karolinska Institute. And we have developed three platforms with so-called small molecule uh, uh, projects, and I'll go into that. And we have one project which is called Alstatin, where we are developing a therapy to prevent that people should develop Alzheimer's disease. Then we have developed something called New Restore, where we want to help people who have developed Alzheimer's disease or other cognitive disorders to enhance their memory and learning capabilities. And then we have also developed a platform called Painless, where we have projects uh, for pain projects. And here we have actually reversed the mechanism we are using in NeuroRestore. Because they are, we are working with neurotrophins, and when you are increasing in the signaling, uh, you can improve cognition and brain health. And then if you are decreasing some of the signaling, you can actually treat pain. So that's how it fits together. And we are listed since 2018 on NASDAQ in Stockholm. Uh, we have a market cap around 200 million and a cash position of 37. <coughs> and we are now initiating a right issue, which is already covered to 82% by uh, existing owners. We have very strong uh, owner base who are really, really supportive. So they are supporting without any cost or anything. So very nice in these times. And our business model is that we are a research and development company. We want to take our projects into early clinical phase, and we define that as up to 2A, and then to out license. So we have no ambition to commercialize. And we are working with small molecules, and this is because we want to increase the likelihood that we, our projects become successful. And if you look at small molecule, they are tiny compared to biologics that you surely know of. And the reason why we want to work with small molecule is that the molecules need to come over the blood-brain barrier, and the likelihood for this is much, much bigger if you have a small molecule. An antibody, for instance, you get about 1.0 oh, to 1.2 coming over the blood-brain barrier. We have developed molecules where over 40% uh, comes over, and we will Come back to that. And this is our pipeline, uh, and we have uh, the three platforms, uh, New Restore, Alstatin, and Painless. And in New Restore, cognitive improvement, improving learning and memory capabilities, we have just finished a phase one study and are now ready for phase two have had positive readout on safety, tolerability, and also shown target engagement. We are focusing on Alzheimer's disease, but we also see we can, should be able to use it in other dementia uh, uh, conditions. 
Then we have Alstatin, uh, preventive treatment against Alzheimer's. And here we are in uh, preclinical phase. And then uh, in painless, we are in, uh, now in phase 2A. <laughs> Uh, and here we are focusing on uh, neuropathic pain, which is one of the, uh, which is the individually biggest uh, market for pain medications. And we'll come back to that in detail. And we are working in very close co collaboration with leading experts in, in academia. Uh, Bengt Wimblad is a very well-known neuroscientist in Sweden. We have worked with him from the start. Uh, Maria Eriksdotter, also at Karolinska Institute, and Henrik Zetterberg, who is uh, a world-renowned researcher and sponsored actually by Bill Gates. And uh, he is working with biomarkers, and we work very much with biomarkers to find the right patients. And our primary uh, focus area is Alzheimer's disease. And Alzheimer's disease costs the society more than cardiovascular and oncology together. And this in a patient population which is expected to triple in the coming 30 years. And this is because we are living longer and longer. And the longer we live, the more likely it is that we develop Alzheimer and dementia. And if you look at Alzheimer's disease, it's a lethal and progressive disorder. And you can see it as two phases. You have pre-symptomatic Alzheimer, where the brain is beginning to be destroyed, but you don't have any symptoms. And the fault to this is that there are uh, toxic proteins which breaks down the brain. And today there is nothing which uh, uh, any pharmaceuticals known that can stop this. And then we have symptomatic Alzheimer, and then the brain is so destroyed, so you get symptoms. And when you get the symptoms, your brain is often broken down by 20 to 30 percent, so you don't want to get there. And you recognize this by speech problems, memory problems, and then functional problems. And here there are some medications today, but they aren't very effective and have a lot of side effects. So here is a huge unmet medical need. And if you look at uh, treating Alzheimer's disease, uh, you can divide them up in three kinds of treatment, symptomatic, disease-modifying, and preventive treatment. <coughs> and when it comes to uh, disease-modifying treatment, and that is to, uh, to change the disease progression, and here there are antibodies, which are launched in the US, but hasn't shown much uh, efficacy, but there is one which is coming. But this uh, treatment is only slowing down the disease progression. And as you see, it's not improving cognition, memory, and learning capability in any way. Then there are symptomatic treatments, which are enhancing your memory and learning capabilities. But what we really need is preventive treatments. And we at Alsecure are working with all of these three kinds of treatments. And the way we are doing that is that we have two platforms. Alstatin, focusing on minimizing the production of toxic proteins. And here we are developing uh, oral medication. And then for the patients who have developed Alzheimer's or cognitive disorders, we have new Restore, which is improving uh, uh, how the uh, brain is working by improving the signaling and new neuron health. And uh, here we also are use, uh, developing an oral medication. And if we begin to look at our statin, preventive disease modifying therapy, what we are focusing on is what you surely have heard about. It's the plaques which are being created in the brain. And these are being created by something called A-beta-42, which is uh, produced in the brain. And this is what it looks like. A-beta-42 is cleaved and then being uh, aggregated up to bigger and bigger uh, fragments. And in the end, it becomes uh, uh, plaque. And this is what it looks like. And then. Uh, all of these toxic plaques uh, or uh, fragments are destroying the brain. We are focusing on minimizing the production of these uh, toxic proteins. Antibodies are focusing on clearing up 
uh, the toxic proteins. And we will see a movie explaining it. In the cell membrane, there are many different proteins, one of which is APP. This protein is cleaved by specific enzymes into smaller peptides. In Alzheimer's disease, APP is initially generally cleaved by an enzyme called beta secretase. The second cleavage is made by an enzyme called gamma secretase resulting in the release of a smaller fragment called beta amyloid. This protein has a tendency to clump together into larger aggregates, oligomers, which damage and interfere with the normal functioning of the nerve cells. Over time, large insoluble protein aggregates are formed in the brain, so-called amyloid plaques, which is a key hallmark of the disease. Alzacure's project, Alstatin, prevents the formation of beta amyloid and reduces the buildup of amyloid plaques in the brain. Alstatin does this by modulating the gamma secretase so that the enzyme cleaves beta amyloid into shorter fragments that are not toxic to the cells, nor aggregate to form plaques. So what was shown here is that we are focusing on A-beta-42 and those are uh, the toxic uh, proteins that are being uh, produced in bigger and bigger uh, magnitudes with age and then uh, building up uh, these plaques. And the way we are doing this is that we have uh, produ uh, developed something called a gamma secretase modulator which is reducing the production of A-beta-42 with up to 50 to 60 percent and instead producing other proteins which are pro potentially beneficial and protective A-beta-37 and 38. So this is uh, how it works. And if you look at the antibodies which you maybe have heard about these have the indication mild Alzheimer's disease. And here you see what the brain looks like when you have mild Alzheimer's disease. So this is where the antibodies are going in. What we want to make uh, do is to see to it that the brain stays healthy so it's not damaged. And uh, because when the brain is damaged, there is no turning back. So you want to stay uh, sound and safe. And the way we want to do that is to identify uh, individuals by genetics and then you can also measure to what extent you are producing these uh, toxic proteins, A-beta-42. So you can take samples and then identify. And there are certain uh, uh, genotypes and so on where the, you have an increased likelihood of uh, uh, developing Alzheimer's. And then, how are we differentiated against uh, the antibodies? Small molecule, higher amount coming over the blood-brain barrier. Oral formulation, uh, the antibodies are infusions for the moment, so you need to go into the hospital and have an infusion. Here you should be uh, treated at home. Also, a preventive treatment, because of course you don't want to get sick. And then also fewer side effects because it has been shown that the, the, the antibodies are producing a lot of side effects. So th that is the differentiation. <laughs> so a very, very uh, interesting uh, concept. Then our second uh, platform, New Restore, to enhance uh, uh, and improve memory capabilities and learning capabilities. And see a move again explaining how it works. The electrical impulses transmitted along the projections of nerve cells result in the release of particular messenger molecules, so-called neurotransmitters. These molecules transmit signals from one nerve cell to the next at specific contact points, or synapses. The dysfunction and loss of synapses in Alzheimer's disease correlate strongly with the clinical symptoms seen in the affected individuals. Alzheimer's project Neuro Restore improves nerve cell function and enhances their ability to communicate with each other, including improving synapse function. So the way we are improving the function in the brain is that we have developed compounds which are 
increasing the neurotrophin signaling. And the neurotrophins, BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophin factor, and NGF nerve growth factors are essential for the brain health and learning capabilities with regard to be able to learn and be able to remember. And what's interesting here is that these neurotrophins aren't only central when it comes to Alzheimer's disease. These cognition problems are, you also see in Parkinson's disease, traumatic brain injury, uh, and sleep disorder. So we see the opportunity that this can uh, be used in very many different uh, uh, indications. And actually also depression. And what we have shown in preclinical models that we can do is that we can improve the ability to learn, improve the ability to store what you have learned, <coughs> and then also to remember what you have learned. And we have dosed at these different time points and shown that we can improve each of these. And we have had positive readout this summer showing uh, excellent both safety and tolerability and also uh, showing that we are uh, increasing the activities in the centers which are central for uh, cognition but also actually for treating depression. And what's been very interesting here as well is that we have shown that potentially this is not only a, a symptomatic treatment which improved learning capabilities and so on, it's also been shown that it improves the, the health of the nerves. We have shown that we are increasing the mitochondrial activity with between 25 to 30 percent and making the cells more healthy and that we also are uh, imp uh, increasing the, the production of BDNF and BDNF is uh, the hormone which is produced for instance when you are physically active, when you are training and, and so on and you know when you have trained, been to the gym and been active you have an improved uh, uh, focus, you uh, have a higher ability to learn and everything. So BDNF is very, very central. And then this summer as well, we got our US patent approved until 30, uh, 2039. And on top of this, we will also expect to have exclusivity. So this is new restore. <laughs> And we will be presenting new data around both new restore and our statin on CETAD, which is a, a very big uh, Alzheimer's Congress, uh, which is taking place next week in, in San Francisco, which was sold out one month before uh, the deadline for signing up. That's how, uh, how crazy popular Alzheimer's is uh, now. So, uh, and there will be so much new data being presented there, the lecanemab data, uh, uh, etc. So very, very interesting. Our second focus area is chronic uh, pain. And when it comes to chronic pain, chronic pain causes as many suicides as depression. It's also the most common cause uh, for sick leaves and 20% of all uh, visits to the hospital and to the primary care are pain problems. And as you know, in the US there is a big opioid uh, uh, pandemic which is decreasing the average uh, uh, years lived. So here is a huge unmet medical need. And the way we are attacking this is we have one platform, uh, Track A NAM, which is a negative allosteric modulator, where we are focusing on uh, osteoarthritis and other severe pain conditions. And then neuropathic pain when the nerve cells or nerves are damaged. And here, more than 600 million patients are suffering from that. And here we have. Uh, ACD 440, and ACD 440 builds on what last year was rewarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine. And it went to Professor David Julius, who has uh, built knowledge around the so-called TRP1 receptor, which is central for pain sensation, temperature, and, and touch. And we have a TRPV1 antagonist. And this we have inlined from AstraZeneca, and uh, many of our employees who are coming from AstraZeneca has worked with this compound for a very long time. Uh, we have developed a, a topical formulation uh, because 
these receptors uh, in peripheral neuropathic pain is you can reach them through the skin. So why should you flush uh, your body with, uh, with a, um, a systemic treatment when you can use it uh, uh, locally? And here we had a uh, positive readout in the 1B study last year. And uh, with the results, we went to the FDA and got feedback, uh, built a trial and started it uh, this summer. And we are expecting a readout uh, mid next year. So we are uh, actually working on finishing up that study. And uh, so this is a very interesting one. And neurotrophic pain, the biggest individual pain market, uh, sales of over 11 billions. Since the unmet medical need is so big, double digit growth is expected. So an interesting market. And then we have Trek a nam a negative allosteric modulator focusing on NGF signaling. And we know from the antibodies, there has been NGF antibodies which have shown really good effects, but they have also shown side effects. And what we have developed is uh, Trek a nam which is uh, a molecule which is focusing on uh, the Trek a uh, receptor where uh, NGF is being connected and based on this we expect that we could uh, avoid the side effects the P75 which is for to cause the side effects and still have uh, very good uh, clinical efficacy and this we have shown already now in several uh, preclinical models and also uh, have a better side effects develop an oral administration, compete with the opioids, and not uh, mm. be creating addiction. And then uh, I can say that uh, 2022 has been very successful for us. We have made progress in all our different uh, programs. And because of that, we are now preparing for uh, 2023. And our ambition is to out-license one of our projects uh, already now new restore is really attracting attention and also ACD 440 where we are expecting a readout if that is reading out positively we know that there is a huge unmet medical need then uh, we will also go with new restore uh, to the FDA for a pre-IND meeting with regard to how to develop the programs because we want to come to the market as soon as possible then also progressing on statin, we have developed new molecules, uh, new patents, longer uh, uh, patent times. And then also uh, advancing track a nam uh, towards uh, a, a clinical uh, safety testing. And uh, track a nam and this kind of pain is a holy grail. So we already now uh, are having interest from uh, big companies and if you go to, uh, and look at the deals uh, that are made on uh, validated pain uh, targets you can uh, receive very nice rewards there and then also we want to uh, have the of course the readout on uh, painless acd 440 uh, in our phase ongoing phase two study so that's the goals and to finance this we are now have proposed um, a right issue and we have very, very supportive uh, key owners. So they have went in and already now uh, guaranteeing without any cost 80% of the, uh, of the rights issue. Uh, and they actually want to increase their stakes in the company. So uh, uh, a lot of support. And then uh, we are also looking at the opportunity to take in an additional 15. We don't want to take in more money than we need to really move this forward because we want to preserve uh, uh, the value for the current uh, shareholders. So you can go in and uh, read about this. And then uh, why is South Secure interesting to uh, invest in? We say we are focusing on areas with huge unmet medical need we are doing it with a strong uh, team, with a strong track record, to be able to identify targets, develop <laughs> molecules, take them through preclinical and into human and show uh, good effects. That is what we have shown. And we have built several different uh, projects. 
And also, we are really coming with first-in-class properties which really can be game, game changers. We are also uh, doing a parallel investment with uh, potential follow-up programs. Each individual uh, project that we have has a blockbuster opportunities. And also now, this year, we went in to become a phase two uh, company. Now, during the fall, we have another project which is uh, ready for phase two. And this in the uh, area of Alzheimer, where we know that there is increased focus. So with that, I would like to open up for some questions. Mm -hmm. First of all, I would tell you have some. Yeah, I have. Yeah. yeah. Maybe hang up here if you want to yeah. take one. Yeah. And now, is there any questions? Mm. Mm. Lars? Mm. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, thank you. A bit of love discussions about uh, mm. the amyloid beta, you yes. know, yeah. uh, and the importance for this uh, Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. Now we've seen uh, some positive news from mm -hmm. BioArctic, yep. uh, one of your Swedish colleagues. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and uh, I say, mm -hmm. my question is uh, just to make sure mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I've understood this right. Yep. Your, your drug is mm -hmm. actually not targeting visa and memorize. Uh, you're targeting uh, precursors, you would say. Yes. Precursors, right? Yes, correct. To see to it that the amyloid beta isn't the toxic forms of amyloid beta isn't built up. Uh, and what's important to say here is that amyloid beta is thought to still have a, a, a use, a positive use in, in the body. So it's about targeting the negative toxic A beta. But we are focusing on A beta 42 to minimize that production. Yes. And how, how do we look at amyloid beta? <coughs> uh, the, uh, how it how do you look at this impact from this uh, mm. compound on mm. the, the Alzheimer's disease? There's mm. been a lot of discussion yep. about that, right? Mm. How do you look at that? Uh, first of all, uh, uh, what's happened now with uh, um, antibodies, uh, with the uh, antibodies from uh, uh, lecanemab but also donanemab, they have shown that if you can reduce the A-beta load, you can also uh, reduce the negative impacts on, on cognition. So based on that, the amyloid hypothesis has been validated. And based on this, we want to make sure that you do not produce this amyloid. So we will show or need to show that we are uh, m uh, minimizing the production of the negative A beta in the brain. Okay. Mm -hmm. But still there has been a lot of uh, discussion mm -hmm. about this, yes. uh, the importance of uh, the pathology of uh, this amyloid. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, and, and the question is also, if mm. you look at the, the bioarctic uh, mm. compound, mm. and now we're talking about another company, mm. uh, yeah. but uh, there have been discussions mm. about whether the, the impact mm. of the disease uh, mm. is, uh, is uh, strong enough, you mm. say, to, mm. to justify yeah. the drug in the market, yeah. even though it has been one of the best uh, results we have seen with, yeah. the, with this kind of compound. Mm. How do you look at that? It's correct what you say that it has been questioned if the, the help is uh, uh, good enough. Uh, but still, I think that it is up uh, at where you can see that it has a, a clinical uh, benefit. Then I think it's also a question of looking at the individual patient population because you can look at uh, the big group and then you have certain patient groups where we surely will see that you have even better effects. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and, and just a, a final question. Mm -hmm. um, uh, treating this disease mm -hmm. in the early yeah. so it's mm -hmm. very important to yes. say, right? And um, mm -hmm. then the, the diagnostics mm -hmm. uh, side is very yeah. important, you could yeah. say. Absolutely. I suppose it's uh, blood marks that would be the most important marks. Absolutely, it is, it is. So what we will be looking for is patients who, for instance, have a, a, APOE4, which uh, increasing likelihood to develop, 
and then to uh, take blood tests, but also spinal uh, fluid tests, where you look at uh, the amounts of the, the toxic A beta. So that's how we are going to identify the patients. Hmm? Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on the design of the, 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 the clinical study that is necessary to, to show the efficacy and mm -hmm. most impro important problem with the timeline yeah. to, to show efficacy? I mean, if, if it's a 10, 20 years time span, then it yeah. take long before you could actually see results here. Or? You, you can see it uh, in that way. Uh, we call it L-statin because it is like the statins, that if you treat early then you will not have, uh, uh, then you can avoid the, the disease. So therefore what we are going to, to look at is the load of the, uh, the toxic A-beta uh, in, in the body. And to your point as well, uh, since it takes a lot of time to develop this uh, disease, the trials are very, very tricky. But uh, if you go to the FDA and, and also the European uh, authorities, they, they say that if you can have a biomarker which is validated, then you should also be able to, to get uh, an approval. But as you are pointing to, if you were going to do a placebo, uh, randomized trial, you maybe wouldn't need to do it for 15 years to really uh, have hard evidence. But here we hope that with the trials that are done with the uh, antibodies and so on, the, the belief in that reducing the toxic uh, amyloid beta will be enough. But it, it is absolutely a challenge. You're so right. When, when do you expect the clarity on this? Uh, we are actually, we want to, of course, go into, uh, how should I say, uh, go into a clinical trial uh, very, very shortly, in years. And then what we will look at is uh, to what extent we can diminish uh, the production of these toxic plaques. And we know, for instance, that individuals who aren't sleeping as they should, in those, you can see how these uh, toxic uh, uh, substances are, are building up. So we intend to have one group which are having uh, not treated, another group who are being treated, and then to be able to show how we can reduce uh, the negative A-beta load. That is the first uh, step that we will take. And initially, uh, of course, in healthy people, and then we, we need to see how we can move it on. But what I should say with Alstatin as well is that Alstatin should also be able to be used as a combination treatment uh, together with the antibodies. And Ayla Lilly has a concept that you should use uh, uh, antibody to clean up the brain and then you should have um, a concept like Alstatin for maintenance treatment. So you don't need to go in to the hospital uh, every second week or, or once uh, a month. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Pastor. Yes. Mm. Are you producing the Medication yourself or yes, we are. From no, uh, of course, we have done the mo uh, molecule and so on ourselves, and then we are uh, working with, uh, of course, professional companies to synthesize uh, uh, the molecules. But uh, these uh, molecules we now are uh, advancing on uh, Alstatin, we have done by ourselves. Uh, uh, and uh, for people who know the complexity here, uh, can understand uh, what competence we have. And then also on New Restore. New Resource we have also done ourselves. Track A NAM we have also done ourselves. So you shouldn't only look at us based on these uh, individual uh, projects. You should see us as a company who can develop even more. Question mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. you uh, in, the, in the little movie on the uh, product on your graphic, 
pain, I yeah. think you showed mm. the synaptic cleft and there was, mm. but you weren't very clear on mm. what was the mechanism there? Was mm. some, is it some sort of reuptake inhibition or what, how does it work? Uh, the way it works is that it's keeping the protein for a longer time. Okay. So you can cut it into shorter, uh, shorter fragments. So instead of uh, that uh, uh, A-beta-42, which is uh, the toxic one, is being produced, we are producing shorter ones. Yeah, but hmm? I, I'm not sure that you're hmm? answering what I was asking. How it works? Yeah. Sorry. There was, there was you had a short movie where yeah. stuff was going on yeah. in the synaptic cleft, yeah. in the actual synapse. Yeah. Ah, that one. That's yeah. new restore. Yeah. Sorry for that. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. was asking, what is the mechanism there? Are mm -hmm. you are you preventing the reuptake mm -hmm. back into yeah. the? Of, of how, yeah. How uh, we, we 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 work on. Yeah. Okay. We we are working on the receptor, and we are increasing the signaling with up to four hundred percent. So it, it's, uh, it's put, it is acting on the receptor where the BDNF is then, uh, how should I say, uh, uh, it gets into the cleft, and then it's increasing the, the signaling. So it's a positive allosteric modulator. So increasing the, the signaling. Yeah. yeah. So there's mm -hmm. more of this compound in the cleft, or is it just the improved uptake? You don't improve the uptake. What you do is that you increase the signaling on what is uh, coming into the cleft. Okay. So you need to have BDNF there, but instead of having 100% uh, having uh, signaling to let us say uh, 50%, you increase the signaling with up to four times, up to uh, four, uh, 200%. Yeah. And you're not concerned that at some point there mm -hmm. will be some sort of saturation or mm -hmm. effect where the sensitivity of yeah. the... A, a good question. So far, we have, uh, we have not seen that. No. Uh, what I can say, uh, and we are uh, presenting on this, is that based on this mechanism, we have all actually seen that we are in uh, changing the plasticism in the brain. So the effect that we are creating is actually staying on after the drug have uh, left the system. Mm. Mm. Martin Nielsen, yeah. thank you very much for yeah, the thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.